Order, and if we could have roll call. Mr. Holden. Present. Mrs. Gatos. Here. Mr. Juella. Present. Mr. Goncalves. Present. Mrs. Kilmartin. Here. Here. Mandy, say you're here. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Mrs. Kutash. Here. Mr. Minotti. Here. Dr. Ritter. Here. Mrs. Yola. Here. Okay, at this time, if we could please rise and salute our flag. Please be seated. Okay, at this time I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Well, second. I can, uh, second the motion along uh, add the addendum to the board agenda. Okay. And it is an addendum that was published in advance, so I don't believe we actually need a motion to add it, just include it in. Um, okay, sensing we're ready to vote, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, presentations and recognition. Tenured teachers. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to begin tonight um, by recognizing our tenured teachers. And I would ask if you would please, as I read your name, if you would please stand and remain standing. Uh, this will be a brief stand, but uh, okay. So I'd like to read the following names of employees who have worked very hard. We have a, a very serious uh, process that leads towards tenure. Um, there are many people that are not able to meet our requirements. These um, uh, well-educated and committed professionals have been able to meet our requirements, and we are delighted to invite them on board as tenure teachers. <coughs> and I will begin with Melissa Bolada, who is an elementary teacher at Mohegan, and Justin Byron, Dr. Justin Byron, who is a school psychologist at Mohegan as well, Sarah Cannon, elementary teacher at Long Hill School, Jennifer um, Dalion, social work, school social worker at Sunnyside, she is not here tonight because I believe she is probably over at the uh, Boys, Boys and Girls Club. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, Karen Eaton, English teacher at the high school. Uh, Dan Ebert, elementary teacher, Elizabeth Shelton. Alyssa Falanga, uh, elementary teacher at Long Hill School. Carrie Frederick, technology education teacher at Shelton High School. Stephen Giroux, elementary teacher at Perry Hill School. Excuse me, technology teacher at Perry Hill School, I beg your pardon. Kate Heidemann, general music teacher, Elizabeth Shelton and Shelton High School. Uh, um, Allison Hopwood, special education teacher, Perry Hill School. Jennifer Keen, mathematics specialist, Long Hill School. Deborah Goldstein Kidder, general music teacher, high school and Sunnyside. Catherine Lindstrom, school counselor at uh, Booth Hill and Mohegan and at Sunnyside. Uh, Amy uh, Malerba, special ed teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Sarah Marr, a TESOL teacher, Long Hill School. Uh, Tara Michaels, TESOL teacher, Perry Hill School. TESOL is teaching English to students of other languages. Um, Caitlin Miller, special education teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Kristen um, Missette, elementary teacher, Elizabeth Shelton School. Robert Monaco, social studies teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Lana, Lana Marie uh, Montanero, elementary teacher, Long Hill School. Anita Pena, elementary teacher, El Elizabeth Shelton School. Madeline Priddle, elementary teacher, Booth Hill School. David Perch, mathematics teacher, Shelton High School. Lisa Sapienza, school counselor, Shelton High School. Laura Sargent, Spanish teacher, Shelton High School. Carolyn Schweier, mathematics teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Melanie um, Tietjen, special education teacher, Shelton High School. Heather Velu, elementary teacher, Booth Hill School. And Gretchen Webster, English teacher, Shelton High School. I'd like to ask the board to please uh, join me and recognize these teachers for their fine work. Thank you for all you do. And several of them are at their schools for other open house or yeah. steam nights. Absolutely, yes, right absolutely. 
All right, now I would like to ask, uh, we'll, we, I'd like to do a, a similar process. I'm going to welcome the new hires to the district and would ask that you stand uh, as I read your name and remain standing so we can see the fine group that we've added to the district. And I'd like to start with um, uh, Kristen um, Banningoso, special ed teacher, Shelton High School. Victoria Bright, special ed teacher, Shelton High School. Marquesha Campbell, paraprofessional, Shelton High School. Shaquanta Campbell, paraprofessional, Shelton Intermediate. Andrea Clark, Library Media Specialist, Booth Hill School. Adriana Collins, School Nurse, Booth Hill School. Jennifer Cox, Special Education Teacher, Shelton High School. Kristen Donovan, Spanish Teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Amanda Duarte, Speech and Language Pathologist, Shelton High, uh, Mohegan School, I beg your pardon. Pathologist is the word I was looking for. I said it right. Kaylee Ferreri, Elementary Teacher, Long Hill School. Daniela Yanni, elementary teacher, Elizabeth Shelton School. Andrew McCain, paraprofessional, Shelton High School. Aaron um, McEwen, elementary teacher, Perry Hill School. And as was mentioned, Perry Hill is having its open house tonight, so they are otherwise occupied. Um, Aaron Miller, elementary teacher, Booth Hill School. Kay Bermudez Perez, paraprofessional, Shelton Intermediate. Charmaine Mitchell Robinson, special education teacher, Perry Hill School. Hannah Rosam, pre-K teacher, Mohegan School. Victoria Sargent, mathematics curriculum leader, Shelton High School. Christopher Schiante, technology education teacher, Shelton High School. Michael Sudak, performing arts teacher, Shelton Intermediate. Jennifer Wood, paraprofessional, Long Hill School. And Brianna Workman, school nurse, Long Hill School. We thank you for joining us, and we wish you many years of um, <laughs> success here in our district. Okay. Uh, this time we have uh, up to five minutes allowed for anybody who would like to address the board, and this is according to Board Policy 9325. As a reminder, no Board of Education employee, student, or community members should be defamed within public comments. Would anybody care to address the board? Oh, I, yes, we'll, we'll do a brief uh, break here while people think about if they want to address the board. So that those of you who were just recognized can leave if you wish. <laughs> Alternatively, you're welcome to stay and enjoy. It's always a fun-filled evening here at the Board of Education. <laughs> so. Good night. Right, thanks again, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Behavior. Oh, okay. She turned off the video. Oh, okay. Oh, there she is. Okay, hi. Oh, she must be having a drink. It's hard to tell with the microphone. Mandy, how are you doing? Mandy, how are you doing? All right. Not too bad. How are you guys doing? Very good. Okay. Up and speak into your mics. I'm having for some reason just, uh, an audio. I can't get you up high enough to hear you well. Ah, okay. So you gotta use your outdoor voices. Okay. Outdoor. Yeah. Yeah. Recess voices. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's resume the meeting. Would anybody care to address the board? Would anybody Judd. care to address the board? Judd. Judd. Okay. Uh, actually, before Judd speaks, uh, Sean, I just want to thank you for your work on behalf of the Board of Education. I'm happy that you found a better job that pays more money. I'm sorry we're losing you, and thank you for all that you've done for us. Me too. It's been a real pleasure the past four years, and it's been great getting to know every one of you. So okay. I'm sure I'll see you down the road. And until okay. Then, I mean, best of luck with everything. Good luck. Okay. Good luck to you, thank Sean. You. Thank Good you. luck. Okay, sorry about that, Judd, but. But um, if somebody's going to address the board, would somebody mind turning her to the board? You want to turn her to the board. So I can see. Yeah. You're awesome. Thank you. Oh, hi, Judd. Good evening. Good evening, <laughs> members of the Board of Education. Judd Crawford, 
8 Jordan Avenue. Of the, of the six bidders who bid on the contract for 39-06 propane for Shelton School Buses, has a decision been made? If not, is the present supplier still providing fuel <coughs> for the buses? Uh, I think we can address that when we get to it in the meeting. Or? Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Okay, we will be addressing that later in the meeting, Chuck. So. Very okay. good. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Would anybody else care to address the board? Would anybody else care to address the board? Would anybody else care to address mm -hmm. the board? Sensing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is the approval of minutes, which were attached for our regular meetings of August 22nd and the special meetings mm -hmm. on August 29th. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Sensing none. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Communications to the board. Uh, we've had several thank yous from uh, principals regarding the uh, opening day flowers that we customarily send out. And I believe uh, most of us have gotten copies of them. Yep. And uh, let's see, I also, I don't know if you guys saw one, but I just got one today from Kristen yeah. Santilli, so, which was very nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, superintendent's reports and action items. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, brief update this meeting. Um, the opening of school has gone well, um, not without some challenges, as is often the case. Uh, we had the uh, tremendous, unusual uh, set of days that were very hot and humid that uh, impacted everybody and that was um, uncomfortable but the the teachers and students both in their own in their own way were both were all very impressive about uh, uh, focusing on the work at hand and uh, we made it through that first week um, of course last night's uh, rainstorm was um, Horrendous. Amazing. Armageddon. <laughs> I have I have a, um, a a list that I can share with the board later of, that Mr. Calhoun put together at my request of leaks in the various buildings, and there were leaks in in all of the buildings, but um, met most of them minor in in scale, and so it didn't disrupt uh, classes today. Um, the biggest worry would be the turf. And yeah. so I can tell you that I came um, from the first game that was played on our new turf field. I sent you all a, a, a copy of the schedule for this week. Today's game was the first game. Our uh, field hockey team took the field, uh, looked great, uh, and it drained very well. I think that's the other, drain, the field drained well. And I, um, the, our, our girls team, I, don't, I didn't get the score yet, but they were taking on Laurelton Hall. So I assured the girls that even though my mother went to Laurelton Hall, I was with them, our girls. Yeah. <laughs> they laughed, they appreciated it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm gonna be posting a picture of the girls on our, our uh, Twitter feed afterwards. But the field looked great. Um, tomorrow we have uh, soccer and then um, boys soccer. And then on Friday, the girls soccer team will play in the afternoon. And then um, Friday evening, the boys um, football team will play. So it's getting used right away. Next week, the field will be offline again as they complete the track. And most of the team, most of our teams are away that week. So it works out well that, you know, while they're away, we can get the work done. Um, completing the track. When's the next home game after this week? I ha would have to look at the schedule. I'll make sure it's shared with all of you, yeah. so, so you'll be um, cognizant of it, absolutely. Now, transportation update. Um, we, uh, oh, I beg your pardon. I, I also wanted to uh, go over with regarding the opening of school that almost all of the teachers have um, new computers that have been installed, and they are um, very pleased with that because it really, the difference is incredible I know there are still gaps and I know I'm looking at some of my colleagues that are sitting here that would um, that need upgrades in computers and, I, and I'm cognizant of it um, and also our our one-to-one -one program our Chromebook one-to-one -one program 
uh, with uh, a pilot program at PHS and also when the School of Innovation is off and running and uh, with, with success. Um, transportation update. Um, you know, it was a, um, an unusual summer. I won't go over the, the old you know, news, but it was an unusual summer of getting things ready and together, and we did get it together. And even though we weren't able to deliver exactly on the um, requirements the first day before our kids came, once our kids came, we, um, we were running, up and running, and we have enough buses to run the, to do it. We run 59.5 uh, runs a day. Um, and the 0.5 is because we run one extra one in the afternoon because of uh, drop off. So it's, it's 58 and, and 60, I guess, right? But in any event, um, we do have some, uh, there are some buses still being repaired. So you do see some buses that Durham is providing with other names on them. Um, but that we anticipate that that will come to an end soon. For the most part, um, the, as judged by the volume of calls expressing concerns, um, uh, every year it tends to peak in the first few days of school and then go down, that's happening this year as well. So all things considered, um, things are going pretty well. Yes? Um, Chris, can I ask a question about, um, are we keeping like um, a, a monthly um, a report of incidents, how many, I mean, so we can compare how the bus buses are doing? Or, or we don't keep that now. I, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that question whether we keep it like that I, because some of them are so minor so there's there's incidents um, right. and then there's you know I, I'd like a bus to stop in front of my house okay. um, which isn't necessarily an incident right no so, no I'm talking about incidents yeah it, perhaps we can have that at a finance meeting or you know I mean I know you keep us you know abreast of what's going on if there's are you talking about like bus Conduct reports? Or accident. Accident. No, no, not conduct oh, okay. reports. No, accident. Motor vehicle accident. Well, that and any other problems that, that, I mean, true incidents, not little minor things. But I was just wondering if we do keep any kind of log of that or, you know, let, let, maybe get a monthly report just to. Let, let me check in and see if the bus company does keep a file okay. like that that I can share with you. Every Thank you. Mm -hmm. As long as we're talking about buses and the unavailability of the number of the, of the city owns. Um, have we determined uh, the additional cost we're going to pay for the buses that Durham has to borrow from? It seems the city of Waterbury is <coughs> the ones that I see around. You do, you do. Um, Waterbury, Milford, and Trumbull. Oh, well, it's from three towns. Okay. Um, and and it, it, from three towns. Ed, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, I was going to mention it under the uh, budget update, but I did meet with uh, Durham uh, last week. We did negotiate that they will not be charging us um, for any of the extra buses, um, as well as uh, locking into a fixed price per day. So um, any extra buses you see, right now we're not being charged. I assume if they go over a certain amount, uh, they may be. Uh, but they said right now, you know, on, on average they're using about five extra buses a day, and they're not going to charge us extra for those. Ed, could you just uh, clarify for a moment for the benefit of the board and members of the public that um, when we when we sign a bus contract with a vendor, whom, whoever that vendor might be, um, it's not there, there's a projected cost. So we might say it's going to cost X million dollars, and there's a projected cost, but the actual cost is based on what? Actual cost is based on hours, so the number of hours that each um, driver drives, um, the number of buses um, that we use, and the number of routes uh, or tiers um, that we have as well. And obviously the cost per driver per hour. Good, thank you. Okay, any other questions on transportation? Great, okay. Uh, and finally, budget update. Ed is going to be speaking to uh, the budget update when we get to the um, uh, Finance Committee uh, update. But I will say that uh, we have been expressing with our um, colleagues in the district concerns about the, um, the tight budget and the, and the, um, you know, the um, regrettable reality of having to do things like have pay to participate and things like that. Uh, we really are um, running an extremely tight budget this year that has the potential for having us to, you know, take some um, actions as the year goes on. We talked about it at our last meeting, um, but that continues to be the case, and it, it, it doesn't look like there will be any kind of major change um, coming soon. But well, everyone does have paper in their schools, um, and, and that and that is um, uh, not an issue. All right, thank you very much. Okay, fine. Okay, approved field trips. We don't have any. 
Board action items. Items presented for a vote. Uh, consideration of the board to approve Elizabeth Shelton PTO's request to conduct fundraising activities during the 2018-2019 school year. Would anybody care to make a motion to lump some of these? Yeah, let's lump. <laughs> yeah, so make a motion oh, to lump. Oh, yeah, let's oh. turn. Let her do it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hey. Hi. Welcome back. We lost. I think she wanted to make a motion. Okay. Um, were you going to make the motion, Kathy? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I was just looking. Do you want to lump them all? I just wanted to ask a question about number five. So, um, okay. I don't know. Can we can we lump? Um, one I'd through like four. One through four. And the addendum. And then. The addendum and well, let's see, six and seven as well. Or oh, um, Mr. Chair, could I suggest mm -hmm. that perhaps um, Ms. Yolish um, ask her question about number five okay. up front, and, okay. then, and then if, okay. and then if you're in agreement, we could lump them all. Okay, together. so okay. for so the purposes, well, why don't we do the lump together? Then, if necessary, we'll separate it back out. Okay because that's cleaner for parliamentary discussion purposes. I make a motion that we lump one through four, eight, nine, and 10 together as the others are not fundraising requests. Okay. okay. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to lump one through four and eight, nine, and 10 together. Is there any discussion? Sensing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's vote on one through four and then eight, nine, and 10 as a lump right now. Okay. Okay, so um, does somebody care to make a motion to? I'll make a motion. We accept items one through four, eight, nine, and 10 as presented. Okay, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> Sensing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item five. Consideration of the board to accept on behalf of Shelton High School, a $650 donation from Santa Energy to purchase running shorts and shirts for the Shelton High School girls cross country team. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Is there second. a second? second? You had a question. I do. Yes. Okay. Um, I just wondered, um, it, would there be um, some kind of conflict of interest of uh, being that it's from Santa Energy and they're one of the ones that we're considering for? Are, um, the propane. propane. Fair question. Um, Ed, you I might think it's wonderful that they're donating, and I, you know, I just wonder if there could be some. some yeah. Oh, it's, it's a very um, good question. Um, Ed, I know that you're going to be speaking to the issue of propane um, in your report, but it may be um, of interest to the board members now to talk about who is doing the negotiation regarding the, um, the, the selection of a propane vendor. Sure. Yeah, I don't know the timing of the uh, $650 donation um, from Santa, uh, but what I do know is you know, the bid opening, uh, the sealed bid opening occurred last week. Uh, the numbers will speak for themselves as to uh, who the low bidder is. Um, so I would see them as two separate paths, and frankly, I've been talking to another um, major vendor of the school who also wants to make a, a donation towards the athletics as well. So I think, um, again, I, I don't, no one um, from any of the purchasing side uh, made any request of Santa to make that donation. Mm -hmm. um, assuming it came from Mr. Niski, perhaps. Um, again, I, I don't see the paperwork in here. Um, but certainly um, anyone that's been involved in the bidding process has not been involved in this side. I, I think regardless of what uh, the dollar amount here is $650, I can't imagine that that's going to be meaningful compared to the price of the propane contract. Uh, it, it probably falls in the rounds. Uh, so I don't think that any of us would be swayed by that. I think it's. I think. I think. Part. I just want to say. I think it's a good question, and I think we need to ask questions like that. I think in this case, mm -hmm. I would suspect that it's a parent connection, mm -hmm. um, and that it's a. Um, it's a parent that works for the company and is aware that they give funds out occasionally, and, and perhaps they have a child that is a part of that team, something like that. Do we have a parent connection for pay, for uh, the preschool? <laughs> and. 
That's can my you, knowledge. Can, can you find us a, 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 a connection for the preschool? No, we'll keep trying. But what okay. Kathy raises is, is, a, is an interesting point. It's, 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 it's an ethical issue that, that we need to develop a position on because if we're going to start accepting donations from vendors, current vendors and future vendors, it gives the perception that it's a pay to play. <laughs> And, and I think that we need to address that. And I, I don't want to say no to, to, to buying new uniforms for, for, no. the, uh, for the team, but it is an ethical issue, and, and it's a perception. And people and companies can get the idea that, hey, you donate a little money to the Board of Ed, you got a better shot of getting the contract, which is worth millions of dollars. That's no, I, I think that was right up front. That is a good question. I didn't raise it. Yeah, I was well, just I was just curious because you know I just I mean I think it's wonderful that people are done but then again it, we check with you know our legal team for anything else and I'm just wondering I know six hundred and fifty dollars I understand that it's just that I'm wondering in the future much like what they said mm -hmm. is is this possible the other thing that came up is who has the who the tank that the the propane tank that we have right now is by Holcom. Holcom. Is that who, who has? Well, what has been providing the... Um, but is yes. that their tank? No. no. City, city owns, owns oh, the two city of owns. the tanks. Okay. All right. Why they suggest that we take this issue and we kick it down the road, the city has a board of ethics. That's right. Okay. And send it to them and ask them for guidance. And they can provide us guidance and then we would be in compliance. We would be following whatever guidance the city's board of ethics gives us then we would at least have taken that step to remove the perception that it's a pay-to-play situation. Okay. Well, I, I would ask for your consideration that given that the cross-country season is underway, um, yeah. that we consider doing what Dave just said, um, accept this donation is my recommendation given the small scale of it, but make it clear by virtue of this conversation that that's not the policy of the board and that we will um, have it reviewed by the ethics um, uh, the ethics commission is it called the ethics mm -hmm. board? Yeah, yeah. ethics yeah. commission. Yeah. And and then and then we can also put it on our um, policy committee agenda, so it can be discussed more fully by the board. Mark, okay. do you need a formal motion for that to occur? Uh, I don't think we really. I think we have a consensus that that should occur. No. Okay. If if people are in agreement, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't heard anybody speaking against it. If we put in the proviso that we accept this one with the understanding that we will ask the Ethics Commission uh, to look into it and also have policy evaluated. Listen, Mark, we only but I mean, have if you care to make it as a for Ethics Commission and you could get it on their agenda, why yeah. don't we just table it for two weeks? Because they're in the middle of their season. Well, they, they still have uniforms to wear. It's not like they're going in t-shirts. Well, even if they do, it's too hot anyway. But <clears throat> did they buy the uniforms already? I don't believe so. Well, how long would it take for them to get the uniforms? I'd have to look into how long it you would know, take to order I mean, them and all that maybe, sort of thing. Yeah. Well, maybe John Niski can move over funds to cover this now and then back later. I'd be worried about that, to be honest. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I, I, think really, I think we should approve it. They, they probably acknowledge the tight budget that we're running and the pay to play, and he's making a sincere donation. Isn't a Santa? Family? And we could do, and we, and we, we could do that, do. and send it to the ethic yeah. board of ethics, and we could put it on our policy for future consideration. And what happens if they say no, you can't do it? Then what are we going to do? Then we're going to have to take up a collection and send them to the <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly right, Kathy. We would have to take some steps to fund their money if the if the ethics board informs us that we would not be in compliance with the city's code of ethics. Right. Right. Is that's why same? I said table. Yeah. Well, uh, it's up to the board. I, I would be surprised if the Board of Ethics of the city has um, anything other than it, um, an advisory role really? as our work. You're, 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 you, don't, you don't report to city government. And, and so certainly their um, opinion would be of value. And I, and I think it's a good idea to do what you suggested. When, but I don't see them as having um, the ability to enforce some kind of regulation on us. No, but, but, but it's a matter of perception. And, and, it, and if they perceive a problem, that means the public's going to perceive a problem, which means the public has a problem with how we're operating. Do, do, do we know when the Board of Ethics even meets? 
Um, I do not. I have to check. Tomorrow. Well, there's something on their agenda. I think, I think it's they like quor quarterly. Uh, they Judd have to meet. Appears quarterly. to know. Judd? Every three months. Yeah. Every three months. Oh, we can't wait three months. No. Uh, why don't we just? Why don't we do the accept it with that? Commit to sending uh, them a note and ask them about it. Three months. And I don't even know who's on that board. Do you? That season will be over. That season, season will be over. over. You're right. Okay. Okay. Well, I meant. Um, okay. So, actually, would you care to make it as a motion that we accept it with the proviso that we send it to the ethics board and also the policy, policy. address it? Diane, did you ca capture all of that? I was in the midst of writing it down, but I lost it. <laughs> okay. um, except for the proviso that um, we send it to the ethics committee. Board of Ethics. Board, board of Ethics. Oh, Board of Ethics. Okay. And should they? Our policy committee. It's going to be a discussion item for policy. DOE policy. Okay. And should the ethics board recommend not accepting it, that we will take steps to refund the money? That's well, I, 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 yeah, absolutely. You have to. You absolutely. Have to. I, I, I'm going to put on the table for your consideration. Um, I am not clear what role the city's board of ethics has over our actions, and, and so to, to to give, I don't even know who's on that board, and I don't know what their ethical background is or what their knowledge of ethics is. And I'm sure it's um, they're very upstanding people, but um, I, I would be concerned that we start deferring to a board of the city to say they can tell us what it is and isn't ethical. They could advise us, and we, and then you could decide what you want to do. That's if I, I could make a friendly amendment to the motion that um, pending their have a negative attitude towards it, then we bring it up for discussion again. Something to that at effect. A at a board meeting. At a board meeting. We also have corporate counsel. Would have to be a, a and that doesn't cost anything. That's what I was just going to say. Why don't we bring it up to Chris and see what she says. Oh, I our corporate council. Well, well there's, we there's several. We, we have a board council and, and we, we have, have city council. City council. Yeah, we that, could ask yeah. so that's not free, by the way. Well, city one, we could make fun. No, we get charged for them too. We get charged for them. Yeah, could so. be a one-minute job. Uh -oh. and you've heard of bill. Yeah, you've, bill. Yeah. you've heard of billable hours. There are billable minutes. Fifteen yeah. minutes. We we'll, we can get it in. Quarter. Yeah. Okay. Make the so. question. Second. No, yes. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Diane's lost it. Yeah, now well, I, I will have to go back and listen to the tape. Well, can, can I recommend for, for Diane's benefit and for everyone's benefit that, that this is just my recommendation that we, at this moment uh, in September, accept this donation and commit, and then it doesn't have to be part of a motion. I'm telling you, I, I will commit to drafting a letter that will go to the Board of Ethics. And we will also put it on our agenda for um, policy so that we can come up with some policy that you would feel comfortable with moving forward. And maybe there'd be a cap, for instance. Maybe mm -hmm. any donations under a certain amount would be okay. acceptable or not. Well, we should be able to look and see what other, what yes. other boards do, you yes. know, what state. Um, well, I think it depends, on, it depends on our town. I mean, we, you know, every town probably has different policies regarding that. Okay. Lorraine, we can look at Cave, too, and see if they have any policy. Nine into 650. They're going to get us this year. $70 each. 70 something. You can put mine in, though. So could there be a simple motion? Yeah, let's. Can you and I can talk to one another? At this time, I would like a motion to accept the donation with the proviso that we will submit it to the Ethics Board and to our Policy Board. And in the event that there is a negative finding from the Ethics Board, then the Board will readdress it. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Sensing none. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. No. Okay, motion carries. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda. Consideration of the board to accept a $2,000 grant from Walmart to be used to supplement the pay to participate assistance fund for both athletics and extracurricular activities. So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Sensing none, all in favor, aye. 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 
Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd just like to commend Walmart for doing that. Um, it was a grant, correct? It was yes. a grant. And, yes. And because I believe um, Peggy Camp was instrumental in securing that, that grant. Mm -hmm. So a shout out to her as well right. for yep. helping. That's yep. correct. Okay. That, that would go, if you accept it, that will go into the fund that we've discussed that is okay. available to help students um, who have uh, financial difficulties in making the pay to participate. That is a nice gesture yep. by Walmart. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. What was the green okay. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Seven. Consideration of the board to adopt policy 5113 school attendance and loss of restoration of credit that is set for review. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? Sensing none. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, uh, comments by the board chair. Uh, it is a shame that we lost Sean. Uh, tonight is his last uh, board meeting night for us, and he has done a terrific job for us. And this is kind of an example of one of the problems that we face in our district where people like Sean can make much more money in the private sector than they can working for us. And so we have had a problem maintaining people in our IT department. And over time, this is something we are going to need to address because Sean's been here for four years. He knows a lot of things that his replacement will need some time to develop. So that's something we're going to need to bear in mind. And of course, ever tightening budgets are a huge part of that problem. Um, our next football game at home besides this Friday is October 26th. And I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I suspect the Thanksgiving game is also going to be on our field, but technically it's a home game for Derby. But their field isn't going to be ready for a while. So. Especially after last night. <laughs> yeah, so they'll probably be on our field. Yeah, unfortunately, half the hill uh, down on their field. I was at a meeting in Derby today about homeless children and. Um, and I got the report direct from um, my counterpart, and we, we fared much better than they did in terms of the, our field. The whole up. hill must have come yeah, down. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. Boy. Well, I hope that's. Yeah. Uh, other things, I'm sure people have heard lots about the mold at the high school, and we are still waiting for the report from OSHA, uh, but basically, we're dealing with it as well as we can. <laughs> and uh, as soon as OSHA gives the recommendations, we will follow them. And uh, I don't imagine the last 24 hours have been great for that, but the start of the week is good. They indicated it would be available approximately seven days after they completed their testing. They completed testing on Friday, so we might get it as soon as this Friday, or if not, early next week. Yeah. So, but. Uh, you know, indications are we're doing what we should be doing, and uh, maybe they'll have some additional recommendations. Okay, reports of standing committees. Uh, teaching and learning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, teaching and learning met on Tuesday, September 11th at 4 o'clock at Central Office, and uh, we had one presentation on personal narrative by Vicki White, and um, she discussed um, narrative milestone experiences um, by the end of grade four, you know, students research and identify um, the story of a historical figure um, and develop biography and with a final presentation. And um, by the end of grade six, a, a personal narrative plan right as, as well, a, a presentation, um, and they could use writing technologies, you know, skits, art, however they want to do it. Um, and then by the end of grade nine, students will complete a personal narrative autobiography that allows them to share their story and experiences from seventh and eighth grade and will prepare them, that will prepare them to share their story. Um, so, and then we discussed, um, there was a question about textbooks and um, reduction of, due to the drastic reductions of the textbook line items for their the budget this year, there are unfortunately limited dollars available for new textbook purchases, and you know this is just the result of the cuts to the school budget. And um, 
Got it. So our next meeting day is Tuesday, October 9th at 4 o'clock in here in um, training room 201. And our agenda items are discussion of FOI concerns regarding taping and minutes of meetings and SBAC. And did you just mention the digital present oh. mission statement? Yes. And then um, attached with your was the copy of the final? Yes, digital? it is. <laughs> yes. Final. So that is attached to the um, today's agenda. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Okay. Do we have to adopt this to put it in the no. program? No. It was actually part of the uh, negotiations from the teachers, our last round of teacher right. contract. And a uh, committee was basically created, and the mission of that committee was to come up with this statement, which they did. We did. Already, uh, finance committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in lieu of the fact that Mr. Trapp is going to give a report, I'll just simply state uh, some of the highlights. The regular meeting of the finance committee met on Wednesday, September 19th, at five o'clock. The meeting was partic particularly long, but very, very informative. All board of education members were present and received a folder with all the handouts necessary to follow the finance director's report and allow for discussion. Our finance director, Ed Drapp, gave an extensive and complete financial report which included the revenue and expenditure reports along with a budget narrative. He also gave a review of the capital projects and non-recurring costs and discussed the 2018-2019 budget fees which included pay to participate, talent and gifted transportation, and preschool tuition. Finally, Mr. Drapp reviewed the city in-kind services to the school system and also the 2019 Finance Committee meeting schedule. Lastly, John Calhoun, Maintenance Director, gave a comprehensive report which included the Elizabeth Shelton School Window Project and the Shelton High School Field and Track Replacement Project. He also gave a report on some of the issues and mostly the accomplishments. John concluded his report with the goals and objectives for the month of October. I would say that members of the Board of Ed asked many questions and participated in healthy discussion throughout the meeting. End of my report. Um, actually, Ed, I guess at Ed? this time we should have you discuss the awarding of the bid and the uh, okay. I was going to do after he made the assignments. It would be easier for everyone to have a copy of the uh, bid analysis. Yours is coming over. Okay. No more if you don't get one. Can we do another one, Ed? You need another one? Oh, you got it? Yeah. Does everyone have one? That's right. Yep. Okay, uh, so on um, Tuesday, September 18th, the uh, city of Shelton had a um, bid for uh, propane for the buses. And um, on the back of the sheet that I handed you, you can see the uh, RFP bid number 39-06, propane filling station. Again, this is completed by the city of Shelton. Uh, I was a member of the audience uh, watching the opening of the bids, and this is the uh, summary uh, that the uh, city sent to me. Uh, subsequently, I reviewed the bids, received copies of the bids, and uh, looked through them, uh, just again to uh, fully understand uh, what people were bidding on, and uh, um, again, things like discounts for prepayments, pre uh, whatever the case might be. Uh, so what you have, uh, where you see the um, various um, rows and columns and, and the uh, various um, um, vendors that bid, uh, just for a little baseline, last year uh, we were locked in in a one-year contract at one dollar seventeen one seven point point one seven five nine cents, based on two hundred thousand two hundred thousand gallons annually, uh, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Currently, we're on the open market. Uh, this bid um, would kick in October one, uh, but currently at market prices. Uh, and again, this is an estimate. I was trying to verify it, um, but I was not able to uh, get a hold of our uh, Hocon rep. Um, 
because he's having some medical issues. Uh, so we're on for about a dollar fifty nine. Uh, so if we annualize that, uh, we'd be over three hundred thousand um, dollars this year. You'll see down below. Um, Again, uh, uh, the way the city bid it was, um, vendors can bid one year. So if it's one year, it's at that cost. So Santa Energy, if we went with a two-year contract, we would pay a dollar one point three two four nine for each of the two years. So this does not go successively. First year, a dollar thirty-seven. Second year, a dollar thirty-two. We would be in for a dollar thirty-two uh, for both years of the contract. And then if we go for three years. Uh, it would be a dollar thirty plus um, for each of the three years, so it would be two hundred and sixty thousand two hundred and forty dollars each year. And again, that's based on two hundred thousand gallons. Um, so you can see uh, as we go down uh, the various prices that the vendors bid and the difference uh, between the uh, low bid, which is Santa Energy. Uh, and uh, each of the uh, successive um, vendors uh, um, going down. Um, one of the alternatives, again, that the uh, city had asked for was um, one of the alternatives presented uh, by Santa Fuels. And the city had Santa in last year um, looking at installing a larger tank. So right now we have two. 1,990 gallon tanks that fuel the buses. Um, so that requires more deliveries uh, because obviously we use the fuel. Uh, so, the, oh, quicker. so the city did explore putting in a 10,000 gallon tank. Um, Santa brought a crew out um, to look at uh, what it would take to do that. Um, Santa would pay for the cost of installing the tank at no cost to the city. Um, I tried having a discussion uh, with the city to see if they were interested in s installing a tank um, and um, did not get um, to a decision um, on that. So although we would save uh, by having a larger tank, uh, we would have to work jointly with the city to make that happen and as of um, 5 o'clock today, um, I did not have a response uh, from the city on that. So my recommendation uh, is to go with Santa Energy for three years at uh, $1.3012. Um, if we uh, use 200,000 gallons, that would keep us at $260,000. Uh, we have $289,000 budgeted. Uh, we would also receive some alternative fuel credit. The amount of that credit changes from year to year uh, based on Congress. Um, last year it was about 37 and a half cents per gallon, uh, so um, you know, potentially $70,000 um, in revenue to uh, offset those costs. Is Questions? It, is there pro is the uh, grant back from the federal is that tied in to their fiscal year? To the federal fiscal year? Yeah. In other words, had the, yeah, um, it, it hasn't been passed sure by Congress as of yet. Correct. Yeah, it changes, like I said, it changes year to year. I would have to double check to see if it runs um, calendar year, fiscal year. I filled it out, but I don't remember. <laughs> my second question is, after next year. That was my question. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Everybody's, we, the, I wrote. The, 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 the buses are the responsibility of the city. So. Do we have the power to do this for them? Yeah, no. so that's, yeah. Who signs the contract? Do we, the power, do, do we have the power to sign a three-year contract right. when it's the city will be running them, and what is our obligation for paying the, for the fuel afterward, after that one year? I asked those questions, and I did not get an answer. Okay. Then is the contract no way, signed by us or by the city? contract is signed by the city. Okay. Well, then, well, then why are we so, even voting on it? If, if, if it's the city signing the contract, then the city has to make the determination who they want to buy the propane from. It's not the way the city sees it. <laughs> okay. So, so in other words, is, is it fair to say that the city is um, running the bid process, the city will sign a contract for propane, and we will pay for the propane? Correct. This will go to the Board of Aldermen, who will over approve it, or the Board of Finance, I guess you should say, um, and they will ultimately approve it, and that will be... Well, if it goes to the Board of Aldermen, did, did the Board of Eight 
AMT has no fiscal responsibility to the city. The <coughs> Board of Aldermen is the fiscal authority for okay. the city. Yeah. So they have to approve it. So if they have to approve it, if they don't like what we've accepted, we're back to square one. Well, then they can they award it to somebody else, but I suspect they'll go with who we did. Because it's the lowest bidder. Right. Because right. it's the lowest bidder. Right. Well, it's the lowest bidder on a three-year contract. It's not the lowest bidder on a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. On a two-year con contract, rural gas is lower. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Would the city Does the city want to be tied in for three, three years or two years or one year? I don't think we know the answer Those to that. Those questions yet. were asked, yeah. and I don't have the answer. I don't answer. So we can just go with the best information we have. So maybe we should just sign a one-year contract. Right. No. <laughs> I don't want to pay well, more. Well, I understand you don't want to pay more, Mark, but, but how can we commit the city for years two and three when we don't have the authority well, to, to commit to the city? If the city doesn't want to commit to three years, they can go for one year, and then that's on them. And do you see this as informational, um, or is this something that requires board action? This requires board action. Who we could, yeah. The city required the school board to put this out to bid. Mm -hmm. They are looking for you to complete uh, an official contract award document. They asked me to complete that and send that back to them. Ed, do you know who the city uses for their for their propane? If they use propane, um, I don't. They don't. Uh, well, I mean, they have the uh, tank um, near the bus station that. Um, does the, um, the, animal the dog pound? Yeah, so um, they have that. But Hokan has, they, oh, Hokan has been doing that as well. Oh, I don't know. Okay. So I, I think we should go for the best deal and hope that the aldermen go for that as well or find because something they, that's better. Because if they ultimately have to approve it, we might as well go for the best deal for three years. With the understanding yeah. they'll probably want the best deal as well. Well, if we didn't, if we didn't go for the best deal, then we would. We'd hear about it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we have to look to save, and there yep. is a savings here. Yep. So. so, I'm sorry, is it, is it the idea that we would agree to the three-year contract, and since it requires the Board of Aldermen approval, they would be on the hook for two or three if we don't end up needing to pay for propane? I wouldn't, I wouldn't read that into it at all. <laughs> okay, so then will we be on the hook for three years for propane? Well, we I think their intent is for us to continue paying propane. Right. It's okay. what? I'm sorry. I think their intent is for us to continue paying for propane. Where the question the comes in is if the city decides to sell the buses, then that could be an issue. Right. Okay. Well, then we have a contract and the propane is going to sit in the uh, 2,000 gallon tanks forever. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true. Yeah. Right, I mean, I think it's hard to vote on a contract. I mean, I guess, I guess it's sort of what we do, right? We, we make assumptions and we do the best we can. And right. The city drafted the bid specs and they put in there and asked for prices for one, two, and three year contracts. Ed, what is so your... So this entirely comes from the city. Ed, what is your recommendation? My recommendation is to go for a three-year contract um, because you will save fourteen thousand dollars this year. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard of the agreement that you have with the city is that they will provide your transportation in the future. And I know in conversations that I've had, they plan on using those buses um, for many years to come. So okay. whether that happens or not, but these are, this is what the city put together. The mm -hmm. city's purchasing agent put the bid specs together. Mm -hmm. This is what we received. Yeah, Taking okay. it at face value that they wouldn't have had it in there mm -hmm. um, if that wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. And that's my recommendation to you. But I will okay. send them whatever you ask me to send them. Okay. Would somebody care to make a motion at this time? I make a motion that we go with Mr. Draft's recommendation to go with the three-year contract with Santa Energy. Is there a second? I second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Sensing we are ready to vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Sorry. Motion carries. OK.
Okay. We have another recommendation from the Finance Committee. It's rec uh, that the board, with the recommendation and resolutions to accept as complete state project 126-0079, which is the Shotland High School renovation. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Sensing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Policy Committee. Policy Committee met, Mr. Chairman, also on Tuesday, September 11th. We met following teaching and learning at 5 o'clock here at Central Office. On the agenda was a review of updated revisions of Policy 6146.2, Promotion Accelerated Retention, which I believe we are carrying over another month as well. I brought the wrong piece of paper, so I have the minutes of the agenda. Um, we had a discussion after presentation by Mr. Niski, or along with a presentation by Mr. Niski, the well newest wellness policy draft, which was a long time in coming. Um, rather, you know, the last wellness policy was quite a while ago is what I, what I mean. Um, we also, at that point, because of the extent of the meeting, we tabled any further discussion of the new board member packet other than the fact that we we're going to assemble a sample version in a notebook, so we had it on hand if we wanted to look at it, review it, or add to it. Um, we also had a, um, I guess under new business, it, it came up a discussion of the pay to participate, and Dr. Smith addressed questions from members of the committee, as did Mr. Niski, as he was also there. Um, about some of the independent fundraising that's been going on around the city and um, they both filled us in on that fund we mentioned before that is being used to um, help kids who can't afford pay to, to pay participate. yeah to, the pay to participate um, it was stated that uh, by dr. Smith that we do not have control over private individuals attempting to raise money for individuals so our next meeting will be Tuesday, October 9th. We'll continue to look at the promotion acceleration retention policy. And as was stated tonight, the donations coming from firms doing business with the city. And that will be at 5 o'clock, also in the training room 201. Okay. okay. Uh, CES. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back to you. Oh, hold on. Public, Public relations meeting. and outreach. Sorry. Mandy, I forgot okay, you. Right here. Uh -huh. um, so the, the Public relations and outreach committee met last month, um, and this is our initial meeting. Uh, we met with Brian and Mr. Well, I, th I think we I think we've ended up with inside our schools by default. Inside our schools, okay. There we go. Um, and actually, our first article has been submitted, but not published. Is that right? Technically, it's published. So um, I have I submitted one article that was published, and then a second one will be in the upcoming um, uh, edition of the Shelton Herald, and um, and you might want to discuss that. Video, don't worry, I'm not suggesting that you 
all do a song and dance on camera, although if you'd like to, come see me. Um, but I think those are, those are opportunities for easy wins to start um, engaging in a different way with our schools and the folks who work there, and we are absolutely um, welcoming any, any new ideas, thoughts, suggestions that you have. Some ideas are still under discussion. Uh, we will plan to have an, another meeting on September 19th, but it had to be rescheduled due to the extended time of the other board meeting that was taking place that day. So, um, so that has yet to be rescheduled. We had originally decided that this meeting would take place um, following, what, every Tuesday following teaching and learning? Um, that caveat to that is that that is going to be variable, like based on my very position throughout the day, um, weeks, months. So we are still pending a reschedule of that meeting, um, and we'll we'll certainly you'll all be invited to that one. That has been established. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, also, just so that folks know, the column in the Herald, it will be switching between the committee and also between staff and so one week it'll be uh, the committee one week it'll be staff that uh, is providing the call right and just to okay. sorry just to yeah. add additional clarification yep. um, the next article from the board will be written by Ann who is the vice chair of the committee and we would welcome anybody who has something they would like to say or write about to also participate um, and write an article for submission it doesn't have to be anything longer fancy opportunity to, to have a voice as a member of the Board of Education. Okay. All right. Uh, CES. One Thank minute. Uh, One other thing for public relations. Um, I would like to request that um, Booth Hill School is collecting money for the fans for the uh, gym. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that has been run by John Calhoun yet to check out to see if we can accommodate the electrical system for those and what the prices are. I know they're fundraising for it, and I love Booth Hill School for doing this because they need it like every other school. They are the first ones to actually take the step forward. And so I think we need some follow-up on that, and that's the PTA stuff, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, CES. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, basically, <clears throat> the CES regular meeting met on Thursday, September 6th at 3 p.m. It was the first meeting of the new school year, so there wasn't much to report other than the fact that Dr. Dumais welcomed everyone to the meeting as new executive director. He spoke about the ease of his transition with Evan Pickoff, the outgoing executive director, and all the work that he's been doing within the community and within all of the organizations and meeting with the superintendents. Uh, each director uh, representing one of the particular programs gave a report related to the opening of schools and the programs that they are doing. Mike Reagan, who did come back as director of the special education, spoke about Milo. Milo is a robot learning tool that uses certain, um, I guess, programs with special education uh, students. CES owns three of them and can lend them out to the district for use. I was fortunate to see, along with uh, Arlene in the past, a prototype of one in action at a rep council meeting. It is my suggestion that it would be worth looking into it and get some more information and possibly set up a demonstration. I think it's something that it's worthwhile for our special ed department. Okay. Maybe a teaching and learning. Mm. Uh -huh. well, yeah. Teaching and learning too. Um, that's the end of my report. Okay. Alrighty. Um, we have no unfinished business. We have no new business. On your packets, you have the tenure report. The vacancy. Yes. Under new business, mm -hmm. um, I brought this up at the finance committee meeting, and, and I really think we need to go forward. And that is to um, lay out for the public the steps that have been taken relative to our budget what we submitted originally, what we were awarded, listing the cuts that we made in order to balance the budget, the impact of the bus contract, uh, the impact that uh, having to pay for the additional propane is having on the budget, and lay that out 
in a very straightforward, step-by-step -step approach and make that available to the public, put it on our website, and make it uh, available to any of the organizations that want to understand all the things that have gone on and the impact that they have had on our school budget. I think that's a step, and I, I think we, we did it, Chris did it uh, in relationship to the bus contract and the steps that went on so people could have a better understanding. But I think that would open up and it would be very transparent to the public as to the changes that we've made in our budget in order to comply with the various things that have occurred during the course of the last several months. Mark, that, that, could be, that could be something that could be written in for, the, in, for one of the articles. Yeah. Uh, I think actually we'll just direct the superintendent and finance director to prepare that. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I don't think we really need a motion for it. That sounds like a reasonable right, thing but to I, do. I think to Kathy's point, it's a great, it's a great item to take under the umbrella of the, the Public Relations and Outreach Committee. However we get out of the public is fine. And we can no. do it in multiple right, ways, right? We can do yeah. it both ways, right? As well as I, 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 and there are a number of social media groups that it, would share that publicly yes, to I, get it more visibility. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Especially the one that we see every open day. Right, okay. All righty. Um, for your information, we have the 10-year report, which is attached, the vacancy report, which is attached, staff and stipend actions, open en enrollment uh, report, and the back to school nights that are coming up, the uh, Perry Hill School one, we had one tonight, which I stopped by for, for a few minutes on my way here. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to reschedule the one we were supposed to have last night. Um, when, uh, October 9th. Really? Okay. Okay. October 9th. And then SIS is tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Shelton High School is Next the Tuesday. second. Um, so. Almost at the finish line. Yes. Mark, Mark before we go to highlights. Mm hmm Last meeting, we talked about the possibility of having to add two teachers to the elementary schools in order to uh, balance class size. What has been the resolution there? Um, Carol, do you want to speak to the, where we are on the um, hiring? We, I know we have not um, hired people for those two, so we are we are working with looking at the class sizes and seeing how the you know how many people come in, how many people go out, because it goes in both directions. And so we are um, looking at that. So did you want to add anything to that? <laughs> well, looking at, looking, at the num uh, looking at the numbers, which I, I do. Oh, I'm glad you said that. OK. Uh, but looking at the numbers, it, it, it does seem like, um, you know, there are multiple schools that have 24, 24 20. So then it's very it's difficult to decide who, yeah. who gets if we were able to afford it, who would get the teacher or not? one teacher and put them in six schools. Yeah. Put them in six and schools. And the other thing that, that we looked at, Chris, Lorraine, and I, we, we also looked at um, the numbers feeding in. I mean, unless we have, um, unless we have like really, really increased enrollment in all grades next year in all five elementaries, I think next year we'll see that we'll be in okay shape because the numbers feeding in. It seems to be high numbers in fourth grade, um, fourth grade mm -hmm. but the numbers feeding in, if you look at the class sizes feeding in, it seems like we'll be in the 21, uh, 19, 20, 21 range next year. So if it looks like we're not going to need to hire. I, I'm not saying that. I'm no. just saying that that's what we've looked at for the numbers. Right now it looks like we have a one year bump. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. You're still only, what, 14, 15 days in? I, I mean, across the right. board, it looks like the fourth grades are high. Are high uh, right. There are three schools where the fourth grades are 22, 23, 24. Mm -hmm. But that would be three schools. So I think, to Mark and Chris's point, it would be hard to determine. You'd have to put the, the, the tags and the tickets in the, in the bowl and pull out who's going to get Under, the teachers. Understand. So the, the, the alternative is the status quo. Right. right now. Which, right. which right means now. that the money that we thought we were going to spend, we aren't going to have to spend. Well, I, I don't know um, that we, we thought that it would be a possibility. It's not that it's sitting there in an account. We were worried about that, and we continue to be worried about it. And, and I, would, I would suggest to the board, given the subject that has come up, um, that this may be indeed some version of the new normal. 
that you know we, we might be looking at class sizes going forward that are going to be in the low to mid 20s. Okay. Yeah. And Is actually, there something else we can do outside of hiring additional full time teachers to help alleviate some of the um, tutors. We could do tutors. Tutor support. I, I mean, mm -hmm. if we have that in the budget, is that something that we can do? Because that would be, if we can buy three, you know, I hate to say buy, we can hire three tutors to help out in those over fourth grade populated classrooms. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. That's something we can talk about. Uh, we can do it if we have the funding available. We have to look at yeah. this, this, is, this is the issue. The, yeah. the thing is, where we were at when we last discussed this was when you took a look at the various things that we might need to do if everything went the wrong way, we were going to be in a deficit. Okay. Right now, I don't believe we're currently in a deficit. Chris? <laughs> we are not in a deficit. Okay. We are not currently in a deficit. Have, have, have we finalized the cost of the bus contract? Um, if you were talking yes. about, so, so we have a final number that we're working with. Right. Okay. And you know, we had anticipated savings. Mm -hmm. not, to, not huge dollars, but a certain dollar amount of savings that we could then turn and use for other things. Right. Not to, you know, I understand because in the end, we go over budget, each of us gets the right checks. And none of us want to do that. <laughs> Certified checks. <laughs> uh, or you can use your, your credit card on the bank account. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think that, uh, you know, be, because the money was so much less than we had originally anticipated and because the budget is so uh, much tighter than, well, we did anticipate, given the numbers, that it was going to be very tight, that we're taking a, a conservative approach to this. And we're, we're, you know, a couple of weeks into the school year, but we're taking a conservative approach to um, knowing that the unexpected can happen. And so we don't want to spend every nickel of the savings right up front. But, but you have to. I mean, I mean so you at have to be conservative. So at what point we have a more solid on what we have to spend, and can we seriously look at adding some relief to these um, overpopulated classrooms? June. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the biggest unknown at this point is what are we going to collect for revenue? Remember, we are counting on $1.7 billion in revenue. We heard Mr. Niski say, we're not going to know until October 2nd. Um, you know, how much, how many people, if you, for the first round of sports, how many people. Yeah, I just sent letters out earlier this week to the folks that haven't paid um, for their transportation. So we'll see how many of those pay. Uh, we have non-payers on um, preschool tuition. Uh, you heard the parents saying, she's speaking for herself as well as uh, for some other parents, that you know, we can expect to see a drop there as well. So I think a big part of uh, um, planning out this budget is going to be is going to rely on how much of that planned revenue uh, we have in, and I think by the October finance committee meeting we'll have a better handle on that. There's too much Jello right now to spend. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. not asking, but 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 we need to 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 put a target date in there because to end up in June with. Hundred thousand dollars that wasn't spent means that parents have put out money that maybe they didn't need to have to put out, or no or, or, or or maybe we didn't get tutors when and, and the kids were shortchanged, and that is not something that we want to do. No. So so we need to and, and if the October finance committee meeting is when we're going to have reasonably firm numbers, and I understand it's a moving target, it's a moving target all year. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. but. We need to make some some decisions in the October meeting then, so so that we can start giving these parents more guidance about what to expect, and and if we can afford to hire t uh, tutors uh, to to help on the overcrowded classrooms, then we need to go to it so that the kids be benefit for six months, rather than one month at the end of the year. Right. Right. I. I, I would imagine this is a temporary problem. I like, hope oh, that it's relatively temporary pending. Right? That will also help alleviate some of the overcrowding. Um, but well, that will be, be for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's next school year. I, I think we okay. are in the new normal. I think we are going to be needing to consider the budget to be a moving target that needs to be carefully watched every month and adjustments made as needed. And, uh, you know, that's just the new normal, unfortunately. Uh, highlights. 
Anybody under highlights? Kathy. Well, I know everybody's going to say about the wonderful back to school nights presentation, so I'll, I'll leave that for, I just wanted to uh, do a shout out to um, Lisa Oko, and she has two sons, um, I think Jeremy and um, Alec at Shelton High School, and she was very instrumental in reaching out to our school system, and we, and we were able to secure, what, 100 and? Approximately 120. 120, 23 inch monitors. Yes and um, Chris made sure that we were able to get them. It, it came from a company that she works for, Alexan, so I just wanted to say thank you to her and her family for thinking of us and giving us the opportunity to get them. Anyone else? Yes, Kate. I do too. Okay. Uh, we, we obviously started the year in a lot of um, gray area with the buses, and there were people saying, who do I contact, who do I contact, who do I contact, my kid isn't on a route, this, that, and the other thing. And I just want to give a shout out to the bus driver of Bus 38, who over Labor Day weekend reached out to a parent because she knew the family, because she drove that route and got that Perry Hill kid on a bus for the first week of school. So a driver, these are the yep. drivers we've had. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and even yesterday, getting them home and all that rain. And they, all they that need rain, a shout right. out. Yeah. Okay. okay. Darlissa. I just want to give a shout out to the new technology when I went in and out of all of the classrooms for mm -hmm. back to school nights, it definitely made classroom presentations smooth, mm -hmm. wonderful, even better than last year. I want one so for my room because my PowerPoint would not advance for my back to school. <laughs> you need to get the Shelton Board of Aldermen to buy a computer for me. <laughs> Explain your Shelton resident. <laughs> yeah. I don't and think it, that's going to flow. And Probably it, not. And it was interesting too because several of the teachers wanted to know who they could thank for the mm -hmm. for their new um, desktops, mm -hmm. and so I did suggest that they, you know, maybe mm -hmm. write a note to the board of aldermen for, mm -hmm. for you know, as well as uh, you know, we mm -hmm. they were instrumental. They're paying for and. And I think that it would be a nice gesture because we're always, because it doesn't seem like maybe enough thank yous are said. So. And, and I hope you're aware that I sent a, a note on behalf of the district to the Board of Aldermen that they read into the minutes at the meeting. Where they made well, we're going to give you a sticker tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Gold star. Anybody else under highlights? Yeah, I'm going to do that now. Okay, uh, my items under highlights. Uh, first off, uh, back to school nights have been great. Uh, I missed the first couple because I was down in Florida helping my dad get reestablished down there for the winter. But uh, people have been well organized and I'm certain that the remaining ones will also be very well organized and well run. Uh, I did get a chance to stop by briefly at the Elizabeth Shelton steam night this evening and I could see some of the things that they were setting up and that looked like it was going to be a great night which I'm very happy about. Some of us saw the football field last week and uh, the new football field is amazing. It is very much a college level field. Um, it's got lots of extra lines because it's set up for every sport that we run except for perhaps basketball and uh, you know but uh, it's going to be a real nice field and it's going to be very safe for the students to play on which is an important thing. Mark Kathy. I just wanted to ask if, mm -hmm. if, um, for the um, administrators of the schools if, if you are planning your STEM nights. Could you make sure it's not on a board of that <laughs> night? Because we would yeah. all love to come. Yeah. And yep. sometimes they seem to overlap and, 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 and we miss out. And those are the fun, that's the fun part of the job. Yes, and also, if you pick a clear night that's not a board of ed night, I can bring people with telescopes. Uh, but I meant back to the field. Uh, the field should last a good long time. Uh, Gary DeFilippo, who has been uh, the point person for the project, uh, is of the opinion that 12 or 14 years from now, when it's time to redo the field, they'll be able to tear up the carpet and just put a new one on top of the existing padding. Because the padding that we've gone for is really good. It's a $1.6 million project by the time you figure in the lights. So it's quite a system. Uh, and I'll be at the game on Friday night, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, um, 
There is nothing else on our agenda other than adjournment, so we are adjourned. Thank you.